What's up everybody? We're back here on site for the best house. Now you guys have been seeing a lot of the interior, but now that we're basically done on the inside, we're going to be on the outside and our goal is to get all the LP smart side installed. But before we can do that, uh, we are going to install and build and frame up a porch on the front of the house. This is the front porch. It's going to be a 24 foot wide porch, eight foot deep. We're going to have the same metal roof. We're going to have a white metal ceiling and then cedar posts. So it's a very standard design for our building. Something we've been doing for probably 10 years now is these six by six cedar posts. I just like the look of them and so do our clients. So that's why we keep doing them. And then on the back side, there is a even bigger back porch that runs almost the length of the house. And that's what we will do next. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So Greg just got done sweeping this area up. What we're gonna do is find the points where obviously the, the porch are. I mean, we're gonna try to use the concrete as our guide, but we all know that concrete's never exactly perfect. So we're not, we're never stuck to the concrete. We always try to make sure that uh, our structure is square. So we'll get some points on the wall, find out then where square is. We got the 180 out here, a little bit overkill for this small porch, but honestly, it's still just better than pulling diagonal tape measures and everything. And it's probably more accurate, definitely at this scale. So we're just gonna set this plumb dot. This uses very little effort, no need to do math and find a diagonal dimension with your tape. So now with the 180 set up and locked on, we can get a perfect square all the way up here. If you don't have the 180, if you're just gonna use a tape measure, you can always take those points, give yourself an eight foot run, 24 foot rise, going to give you a diagonal dimension and you can come right back here but that does require multiple people holding tape measures and then what you have to do is then go from this point down here plumb it up and all of those little intricacies can introduce error versus this gives us an exact plumb line straight up the wall perfectly square that's pretty sweet we just need a ladder so i can so i can get up there and mark it i'm going to make a mark all the way up so we can just snap a line down Okay. But remember, half of an inch in. Let's just grab this receiver. Oh, actually, I can see my, I can see my laser way up here. Actually, I can see it on the whole wall when I kind of look down. But we're just going to go ahead. Yep, it's literally right on this joint. So now we can snap a line down this and it will always be here as our perfectly square line and then measure from here over 24 feet and then we're going to be square on that wall. We got that locked on. We'll take it over there. Let's check it. Right there. Go ahead and pop it. All right. You're going to just hold it. Oh no, it's exactly 24 feet. I guess that's the benefit to using lasers and technology. No guesswork and you just get perfect results. Uh, let's go ahead and mark, so I'll go ahead and get the brackets all marked. You keep cutting your lumber up. I mean, I'll just go ahead and get them installed. Then I can get lasers and uh, check for elevation. So what we're going to do is just line up the edge of this bracket with our line with our mark and this is where we're going to go ahead and drill a hole five eighths i don't really oh i might need the this ain't going to work so what we're going to do just take our marker this is a little bit easier with this because we've got dust extraction here And that's all just from that one hole. So uh, this thing does a pretty good job. And the reason I like it, in fact, I did a video on this SDS. The reason I like using the extractor, but it's gonna make putting this fastener in much better. All right, these are six inch Simpson Titan HD anchor bolts. And uh, that's what we're gonna use to hold these brackets down. I don't really think that these brackets need to be super strong because we're actually tying into the existing structure of the building. But 
I mean, this is this is what we actually use to anchor the the main house to the concrete too. So these things are pretty legit. That is precise. 35 11 sixteenths. I'm just marking grade from the laser and then I'll do the math on where I need to be in a little bit. It's exactly the same. 35 11 sixteenths. This one is 13 sixteenths. And three quarters. Okay, so now that I know the height relative to the laser, which really doesn't mean anything right now, I can then figure out exactly where my grade is, uh, determine eight foot, and then each one of these, those two are the same. This one is actually lower by an eighth, and that one's only lower by a sixteenth. So what that means is I've got two of the same size posts. This one's gonna be an eighth longer and this one's gonna be a 16th longer. So really we're just gonna go ahead and zero out at eight foot. So our porch is eight foot tall. And uh, I can go ahead and cut up my six by six cedar and get that big old beam saw out. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm using the same grade mark on the wall, knowing that if this is my zero, I can do eight foot minus the elevation to those brackets that I just went through and showed you guys. And that's gonna give me five foot zero and five sixteenths. From this point up on the snap line we made, I can measure five foot zero, five sixteenths. That is the top of my eight foot porch post. Greg, can I get your hand, buddy? Just don't get any mud on it, okay? Good? Yep. All right, there we go. All right, so when we got those elevation marks on the brackets, each one of them was a, well, actually two were the same and then the other two were both different. The two that were the same, they were also the highest bracket. We went with eight foot even, that's our zero point. So now this, this post goes on the bracket that is an eighth inch longer, which is what we determined with the laser. So now I'm just going to make it an eighth inch longer. What that's gonna do is it's gonna zero out the top of my post so that the header is all the same and all the differences are made up down at the bottom at the post bracket. So hopefully that makes sense. It's the same thing, you know, that's, that's what you do with a grade stick. You are able to uh, differentiate elevations and then make it up. And this is where we're gonna do it at the bottom of the column. Okay, you ready, Greg? So we're going ahead and we're using these lumber locks. Uh, it's a structural connector screw. And uh, we're just putting a couple in, making sure that it's as plumb as possible with the plate level. And we're going to straighten and square and plumb everything up with the structure even more precise later, but this just gets us as close as possible for now. I'm not gonna go crazy. Why don't you go the other way? Go for it. All right, cool. So now that we have the bra uh, the brackets and posts done. We've got the headers cut for this front. We'll go ahead and install those. Then what we'll do is make sure that these are perfectly plumb and get a dimension back to the wall. That way, if we just cut this at eight foot like we think it is, 
it could be in or out depending on if this wall is perfectly plumb. So we've learned just to hold off on those, do the ones that we know are right, which are the front walls, and then we'll go from there. Um, one more, one more. Yeah, right there, buddy, hold that. Okay, all right, so now that we have these front three put together, Greg is gonna plumb up this column as perfect as possible uh, with the plate level. And then I'm gonna take my LDM and I'm gonna get a measurement back to the, back to the wall, just to ensure as precise as possible. Just makes our job a lot easier. I can't even make this up. See that? Yeah. I mean, that's good. That just means our wall is plumb out here. So eight foot exact, that's just good um, confirmation. And now we'll go ahead and cut this one up, stick it in there and we should be golden. Just putting a temporary toenail in. What I like about the GRK is that it doesn't doesn't really mushroom, so you get a pretty decent finish even when you're going in on a toenail like that, which is important if you're looking for tight joints. Yeah, that'll be good for now. All right, so I'm just taking a block of six by six. We've got our snap lines. This is where this is going to terminate. And I'm just temporarily placing this two by underneath for it to set on. And I'll show you guys how we fasten the actual cedar. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a toenail in this. And that's just to hold it uh, so it doesn't fall off that block. But that's not all we're going to do. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit later. We want to make sure now that everything is straight and plumb. So we'll start bracing things off. We'll get some framing up against the wall that comes out. Supports these mid columns. And gives us something to start bracing to. Oh, right there. Now, nice thing is we've got a girt that runs right through here, and it was kind of semi-planned um, so that we have nice structure behind this guy because this is what we'll mount our ceiling to. Okay, so that's two inches. Ninety-one and a half. That's that, and I'm gonna go five and a half, six and a half, seven inches. This is important here because this is, uh, I found them on the ground. <laughs> it's just what, what I have here. Don't judge me. Remember, we're gonna be a half of an inch inset for our sheathing. Dude, that's perfect, man. Nice work. First time? First time. Dang. I mean, I'm not even kidding you. That's actually where I wanted it to be. Okay, we'll leave that there for now. That'll get a little hanger later. Got it. foot okay now that's done you like it Half an inch. Yep. Now this is just a form of redneck engineering. So this isn't like some detail that's called out. This is like, over time, we've just kind of learned where, if, hey, if we do this, it's gonna make it a little bit stronger. And you'll see as I put this up here, what this is gonna do. So this is our outside framing board. 
but also this two by six that we framed in like so is going to give us a place to screw down into this six by six. And when we connect everything on the end wall, it's gonna give us more structure. So it's just a little bit added and then it gives us a little bit of nailer for our ceiling also on the inside. Hey Greg, guess what? That one goes perfect right to my uh, inch and a half line. Okay, nice. <clears throat> All right. For these connections here, we're just gonna use these uh, 12 inch GRKs, really trying to get as much end grain because we are going to the end grain up here um, on the post below it, but this is, it's not gonna go anywhere. We just throw one of those per connection. I mean, once this thing is all sheathed, it, there's not gonna really be anywhere for it to go anyway. Nothing beats these GRK screws. I mean, this is a pretty large fastener to not need any pre-drilling. Nice. So we're just gonna put uh, two of these on each connection and we'll be good to go. Okay, we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and give this a try in speed two. See what happens. <laughs> okay, that worked out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Bro, that just took that 12 inches like it was nothing. All right, now it's time to cut our rafters. I like to use just a two by 12 rafter, that way I can hand frame it exactly. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys real quickly how I do this math. So I think what I'll do is I'll draw a picture, that'll be the best way to do it, and then it will make sense uh, conceptually for you guys. So we've got our building here, and we've got the top of our porch here. Okay, so there's my outside post, there's that two by six we put up, here's my building. We know that this dimension is eight foot, and we've got a 16 inch actually 16 and a quarter because we're going to give ourselves a little extra overhang. So what I can do, okay, we're just going to clear the calculator, is I'm 8 foot plus 16 inch one quarter. That's 9 foot four and a quarter. That's my run, okay? What I'm trying to do is to find out the pitch and the angle and the dimension of this rafter right here. So we know the run, 9, four and a quarter. I know I'm going to have a 2 inch pitch, so that's a 212 pitch. Okay, now what this is going to give me automatically is my rise, which over here is 1 foot 6, 11 sixteenths, but even more importantly, my diagonal, 9, 5, 13 sixteenths. So what I can do with these dimensions is, okay, this is the top of my 2 by 12 rafter. This is the bottom. All I need to do is cut myself a long 212 pitch here, a 212 pitch here, use the dimension of 9, 5, and 13 sixteenths, and it will automatically give me this dimension perfect. And if we do our job well, if this is level, if this is plumb, then everything is gonna be seated properly. So let's go ahead and cut it and we'll see if it works. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is since I'm doing four rafters, I have the beam saw, I can go through all of them. What we wanna do is just line up the face of the top we're gonna screw them all together. All right, good enough there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, making sure that we're within the dimension of our rafter, which we already know from this little drawing is nine, five, 13, 16. So we're gonna be almost to the whole end of this 10 footer. We're just gonna go somewhere in here. All right. Square. The reason I am making sure that my top side is even is because not all lumber is the same dimension. 
Even if you're buying a two by 12, sometimes it's not all the exact dimension and we want everything to be consistent from the top side because that's the dimension that we know that we want to work with. Okay, so now what we can do, this is, we've already checked crown. This is the top. So we'll just do that just to be safe. We're gonna take our square, which fell on the ground over here. And what I've done is set this up at a 212 pitch. This is the Martinez square. I've showed it a couple times. I really wish that he would make this because the benefit for people I think is huge. Um, it's so easy to set this at whatever pitch you want. So in, in essence, this is a 212. I've got it at three and 18, which is a factor of a 212 pitch, just trying to maximize the dimension. And so now what I can do, this is my top side. I just line that up on there. We're gonna avoid that guy right there, I think. Yeah, right about there. And there is my 212 pitch. Now, could I came in here and put my square here. Yeah, I probably could have done that, but I can promise you, I found that this, I don't have to look, I don't have to try to wiggle it around and make sure it's right where it needs to be. I can see where it's at and make a perfect cut. So let's go ahead and cut this with the beam saw. Then we'll measure down our diagonal dimension we did in the math and then cut our bottom. All right, now with the beam saw, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all these at the same time. Now what we're gonna do is take from this point here, remember, that's what we were measuring. We're gonna come down and we're gonna mark nine foot five, 13 sixteenths. Now that is my long point way down here. And now what we can do is take this Martinez again. Oops, I'm hitting my saw. We're just gonna slide it down till it hits that point right there. Precision being important. Okay. And this is the line, as you can see, I put my screw in a horrible spot. And we're gonna extend this with a, with a long level. Four footer might work. So we're right on our mark there. Oh, even the four footer is not gonna be long enough. It's a shallow pitch. Okay, that's a long pitch cut. That's a lot of work for the beam saw. So, Greg, I might need your help. When I start cutting this sucker, I might need some help. First things first, let's go ahead and screw this here. And then unscrew this guy, hold him pretty good. We're gonna put it here. All right. I think I'll just start it here and then we'll kind of lift it up over it and then back down. It probably will want to pinch it. Yeah. Okay. We'll just start running it and see what happens. a lot of work man that sucker is getting pinched I think
okay. I'm gonna come on that side. Wait a second. Oh no, no, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Get him. Look at that. That might have been a very small hassle to do all that, but I think it's worth it because now we've got four identical rafters that we can also turn over and we will mark all of our uh, purlin locations right now as well. So uh, Greg, if you hold me at the end, hold me at probably, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're gonna go two foot on center, but five eighths cheating, we need to come up the hill. I think it's a three eighths of an inch a half inch piece of sheathing. What I'm trying to do is, this is my, this is my rafter here, and this is my sheathing, five eighths, and I'm trying to remember what this dimension is so that when my, I plane in, I'm right on the edge of my fascia. Five eighths, diagonal, two inch pitch, that would be my rise, eighth of an inch, yep. So it's not much because we're so flat. Right. The steeper it gets, the further you have to go away. So all we're going to do is we're going to do uh, an eighth. So you're there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be normally here, I'm going to come up an eighth of an inch. This is my two foot layout. Square those around. All right, now we can go ahead and pull these apart. And we've got four rafters. How solid is this, you think? I'm good to walk up there, right? Okay, man. So we're going to make a 16 and a quarter inch minus an inch and a half. And that's because that's actually where my subfascia will be nailed. We're going to do this on this end. And because I'm too lazy to walk back down, we're just going to go ahead and walk it out. Greg, don't bang her too much. Let's go ahead. We'll mark another mark over here do you have my uh, chalk line you give it you give it back to me it's right here Don't do this at home, kids. Train professionals. Okay. Hey, Greg, would you hand me that Cirque saw? So what this is going to ensure is that the fascia line is straight and this is a two-fold solution to a problem that you'll see just after we're done cutting these ends off. Okay, now, Greg, can I hand you this big dog? Got it. Yep. So now what we get to do, because we just snap lined this fascia, what I can do is double check that my post is also 15 and three quarters from this fascia. Now this is 15 and 13, 16, so almost seven eighths. What that means is that this is actually out of a line. So 
by using this now as a checkpoint, I can measure back. I'll pull this one screw that I have here. Greg, go ahead and give me a tap out. Keep going. One more. One more. Right there. So now that is 15 and 3 quarters. That is in essence making this post line just as straight as that string line that we just snapped. Go one more. A little more. Uh, just a touch. Right there, right there. You know, if I remember correctly though, you always see things to the right. Remember like your brackets? Like it, it's consistent. Like you're at least a very consistent guy. Oh, born that way. I'm not I'm not mad. Something I didn't do that I probably should is I need to probably check. Okay, good. Whew. To make sure that this is in the right spot sideways, we want an eight foot on center. All right, now that that's done, we're ready to put our rafters up. Greg, did you take my ladder, bro? Greg, you know what I need to do? I need a two by four that's cut at 20 inches. 20, yeah, 20 and a quarter. Can you cut me a two by four at 20 and a quarter? Good, right by a, right into a girt. Okay. How's it look down there, Greg? That is my mark. Okay, so now you can see the kind of, you know, homemade rafter here. Um, we'll do a little bit of tweaking. We'll get some gusset plates nailed in on the inside to kind of turn this into like a, an actual truss. But it's going to be a pretty stout truss. The unfortunate thing is because we're doing a drop-down purlin, we will be doing a ladder on the outside, so our overhang, we will build it, install it. It's getting 5-8 sheeting, um, and we're gonna have a very short run from a fascia board up to the wall, so I'm not too worried about it. It'd be nice and strong. So we'll just go ahead and install all these rafters. Now, we're just gonna be temporarily, you guys can tell, we do a lot of temporary. Um, it could be because we make a lot of mistakes and we need to make sure that we can remove things, but also, because we're gonna come back through and put our actual like structural hangers on. But for now, I like to just put some screws in. Look at that, right on my mark. That's how you know that at least you cut a good angle. And then we'll come back through and we'll put our hangers in here. So one of the things that we did during the framing stage was that all of these post locations behind this wall obviously are specific to the design of the post location on the porch and everything lines up so that bearing points are always transferred to a post. So right behind here is a solid post with blocking all the way on. So when we fasten, we're going to something solid. So in case you were curious, that's what we're gonna do. Now we can put a two by 12 hanger here and go into something solid. All right, especially when working by yourself because Greg's doing other tasks, as much work that you can do on the ground, the better. I've got all my fascia marked and screws already placed. So what we're gonna do, and hopefully everything is good. You know, when you do a lot of pre-assembly, it gets a little nerve wracking because sometimes um, if you make a mistake, it kind of compounds itself. So you hope everything just kind of keeps going the way it's supposed to. So now that we have this, we're just gonna set this right up to this little overhang. Look at that, look at that, that is beautiful. can see my little tail right there is right where it needs to be. That's kind of nice. Doesn't always work out that way. This one too, you can see it sticking out right there. Now it looks to me like this fascia needs to go right there. Okay, we got one more to attach. 
And I think it's going to also be good. Greg, how's those blocks going? Nice. That should, should be just money. Okay, I'm actually gonna bring it right there. Now this one's a little bit long, you see that? See this little tip? That could just be a very poor cut on my part. No, I think in, when I was measuring that block, you said it's about a quarter inch big. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you go to that end? Give me a little push. Right there. Beautiful. Okay, face are done. Now on to purlins. Oh. So this board is gonna support the ceiling on the inside. And we've learned that we can't forget to do it because it's really hard to put up there when the sheeting is already on. All right, because we are doing a smart side soffit, we also need nailing every two foot. So we're just taking some scrap two bys, we're putting them in every two foot. And what this will also do is give us a opportunity to straighten out any of the fascia that maybe is a little weird, but this fascia actually looks pretty good. So I don't think we're gonna have too much of an issue. The thing is smart side wants nailing on 16 inch soffits every two foot. I think it's probably overkill, but we're just gonna follow, follow what the manufacturer suggests. Now these will all get hangers. Uh, once again, we're just temporarily screwing and then we'll come through it one time and do all of our hangers uh, when we get the compressor out. Go ahead. So here I'm cutting end fascia and I'm just using math so hopefully things are where they're supposed to be because I'm not gonna guess it, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut to fit. I'd like all the purlins to make up our overhangs naturally. It's a lot easier for us, a lot less work, but we'll go ahead and screw this all together. I think it'll be just, just fine. You good? Where do you gotta go, buddy? Wait, why? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Jeez, Greg, I guess when you gotta go, you gotta go. I'm gonna try this. I ain't got time for Greg. I don't remember what I did here. That is my outside. Set a couple screws. not far enough. Well, I messed that one up. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that, were you? All right. So you go up, go up. Oh, I was just gonna take it and spin it around. 
So it's got to be spun and then flipped around. Yeah. I should have known better because I marked this side. Sue me, dude. All right, we'll go ahead and get one in for you. Uh, you we might want to work it up and down. And Looks pretty good. I might actually move these in when I get done. We'll see where this all ends up. All right. We'll put some nails also through it, ring shankers. I'm just going to wait for Greg. I'm going to try to be smarter. All right. Then I'm liking it. Well, I didn't expect it to take all day to frame this up. We're just getting our bearings straight and getting back on this job site because now that we're on the outside, I'm excited to get all this done. We got the first porch framed up. Now it's ready for sheathing. We'll get our steel on it. And then basically we won't touch this again until we run uh, our siding around. All right, we didn't get everything done in one day on this little porch. So of course today it's like 20 degrees colder, but we've got hangers to put on all the framing and we've got uh, sheathing to put on the roof. We got ice and water, which is a high temp, non-granular, very important for metal roof, and a little bit of sheathing to do on these ends, and then this port should be done, so let's just get right into this. Better than nothing. It's actually snowing out? Now with all these hangers, we're using tenpenny um, joist hanger nails. In fact, you know they're going to look something like this. And a lot of people might say, "Well, aren't you supposed to put 16 pennies?" And actually, most brackets they should all say exactly what is required. And on these brackets, we can use 10 common or 16 sinkers. So we're putting 10 pennies in all of these uh, holes and just filling them up. All right, before we go ahead and start our sheathing, we're always gonna make sure that this is square. We plumbed up the front. I feel like it's more important to be square than perfectly plumbed because if you had to move a post an eighth inch one way or the other, no one's gonna see it. If it looks good, it is good. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and check for square. So we're about 308 and three quarters, Greg. Let's double check it. God, I love this weather. It's awesome compared to tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be nice. Uh, 56 or something. Yeah. Let go of your left hand. There you go. And so here we're 309. So what that means is that potentially this needs to go, the front needs to move this way just a hair. All right, just for a guide, I'm going to put a little tick mark here on this board. And this is what we're going to push this way. We don't need to go much. Right there, Greg, you already moved it probably more than we need. Let's hold that. Okay, should be good to go now. All right, so we were 309 and 308 and three quarters. So now we want to be in the middle, which is seven eighths. And I know you guys can't see that, but if you look at my tape, we are dead money right on that mark there. 308 and seven eighths. Definitely good enough to sheathe this roof. Okay, Go, let me nail this off. Okay, go ahead and move it where you want it. Now there's absolutely no reason to be using tech shield 
but that's what's up on that roof and uh, we had enough pieces so no sense in not using it it's very small cost to uh, use tech shield over regular and hey this porch roof will be potentially 30 degrees cooler than a standard attic if it didn't have tech shield right So we're using two inch ring shanks. Should be plenty, plenty good. And always space your sheathing. That is important as well for expansion contraction. I don't know if we're gonna put the ice and water on. It's a little bit cold out right now. We just got some snow that came through. Luckily, it's not really sticking anymore. Um, we're probably gonna have to hold off on the ice and water. So let's go ahead, Greg, and we'll get that weather logic. We'll get these ends. That way, that's all done. Also, I do have the steel for the roof, for the ceiling. It's all on order, so as soon as that comes in, we'll be able to finish this. But at least now, we've got a, we've got a roof over your head if you wanna sit underneath the porch. Nice. Greg, we'll be able to get the other side out of that too. All right, so remember at the beginning of this porch frame up, I talked about how we were going to be supporting this six by six. So we did that large uh, GRK structural lag into the column, but now that we're installing this sheathing, okay, this piece of sheathing right here is basically gonna act like a gusset plate on a truss where we're gonna be nailing off and attaching this two by 12 to this two by six that's on top of this that we then screwed into other two by sixes that are screwed into the top. So it's in essence adding quite a bit of structure actually for something that is literally just supporting its own weight because all the roof is on this two by 12, which is bearing on the post and back here at the wall, which is on another column in the building. So. I always get this question. Let me just tack this up. I always get the question of how we are fastening this. This is just a temporary support until we're done framing, but this is not gonna go anywhere now unless this whole porch gets ripped off because when we're done nailing this, it's all gonna be basically one piece anyway. So hopefully that makes sense. And no, I'm not an engineer. This just seems to me to be probably overkill and strong enough. All right, guys, we are now done with this porch as far as like the structure goes. It's a little bit cold today. We've got just some snow, so I'm not gonna put the ice and water on right now. Tomorrow it's supposed to be mid upper 50. So ice and water really likes that sun in order to adhere properly. And I think it even says on the uh, packaging, don't install under 40 or something like that. Um, even if it doesn't, it's a pain to install when it's cold out. So we'll get the ice and water tomorrow, and this is ready for smart side fascia, soffits, steel roof. So yeah, that's the frame up of this porch. We got one more now we're gonna do on the back side. That's gonna be basically the same as this. So I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and run through a bunch of time-lapse footage of it getting put together, and then that'll be it for the porch framing.
right, guys, that is the porch frame up video, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, pretty dang simple way to add up what I think is a great uh, visual appeal to any post frame that really brings it to look more like a regular home, not just a post frame home, which I think are beautiful anyway, but it's a good way to dress up a building. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed that, please hit that thumbs up. It helps a lot. And obviously, if you guys want to see the exterior of this house come together with LP smart side lap siding and we got some Versetta stone make sure you hit the subscribe button so you guys don't miss out and we'll catch you on the next video